I found that one of the most humbling experiences you can have when you're learning to code on your own, so without a school or a boot camp, is when you hit that first get real moment. I call it a get real moment where you are maybe trying to build some application, you're trying to learn something, it's just not working, you're struggling. Maybe this has been like two or three days in a row or longer, and you begin to realize you're like, this goal that I had of becoming a programmer in the very beginning, I thought it was gonna be pretty easy. Maybe I just read a few books or build a few simple applications. And you realize that it's not as easy as you thought it was gonna be. And you really start to realize that there's a lot of struggling involved in learning to code to the point where you can get to be a software developer. So in this video, I wanted to talk about why you struggle to learn to code, because I've worked with many different people on this. I talk to people all the time, and I see pretty consistent things that people do wrong or things that they do that make the process a lot more difficult. And I wanted to dive in and talk about that and give you some strategies to make the process easier, at least as much as you possibly can. Now, I wanna make it abundantly clear here that there will be struggling. It's sort of inevitable as you're learning to code because becoming a software developer requires a pretty refined skill set. It's not easy to do, it takes a long time, it takes a lot of practice. So there's gonna be struggling. I'd say if you're not struggling at all, that's actually a sign for concern because I'd say you're not pushing yourself hard enough, you're not pushing yourself to build applications that really challenge your skill set. So there's gonna be struggling, but we don't want you to struggle so much that you build up a lot of anxiety and stress around the idea of coding because when that happens, then you're not gonna wanna code and you're gonna avoid the activity, you're eventually gonna quit because it's just gonna be too much for you to bear. So let's just get that out of the way first of all. Now, whenever I see somebody who's really struggling with this, there are three things that come to mind that they could probably improve. The first thing that they often can improve is their own personal management, specifically relating to how they schedule their time. So the most important thing I think anyone needs to know about learning to code successfully to the point where they can get a job is that it's all about consistency, like showing up every single day, putting in time, and also doing that over a long enough period of time, not just days, not just weeks, but months and years. And if you wanna be really, really good at this, then show up for years and years uh, pretty consistently. There's no other way around it. There's no shortcuts to that. You have to put the time in and you have to be consistent. And there's two types of people who I've seen who try to become programmers. Person one, the person who struggles, is they wake up every single day and they think to themselves, hopefully I'll get an hour in today. Hopefully I'll get in two hours today. Hopefully I'll get in three hours of studying today. I'll try to figure out when there's some opening in my schedule. And that person usually struggles to find the time because life comes at you fast. You have to be disciplined. You have to have a lot of willpower to figure out when you're gonna do it. Whereas person number two, is a person who schedules their time in. So maybe the day before they figure, okay, I'm gonna study from 11 a.m. to noon, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. because I can see that I have a break in my schedule there for it. Or even better, maybe they've created a ritual every week around certain times where they know they're gonna study. So maybe they say every day before work from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., I'm gonna study for one hour. After dinner, like 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., maybe that's another time when they're gonna study. The more that you can get this scheduling down where you can have your personal management be on point, the more likely you're gonna be doing this for a long period of time. So the ability to manage yourself and schedule your time really creates what is called a compound effect, where all these little actions taken over a long enough period of time produce a large breakthrough. And eventually you get to the point where you're a lot better at this. All right, now before we proceed any further, I just have to say, if you have enjoyed this video so far, it's required that you go down and smash the like button. We can't move forward until you do that. Also, if you're not subscribed to my channel, definitely go down there and hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon so you get notifications anytime I put out a new video. All right, now let's proceed. The second thing that I've seen really increase people's struggles is when they lack a clear plan. So many times people learn from a friend, they're like, hey, you could be a software developer, you can teach yourself to do this, you don't have to go to school, they get really excited, they go out and buy like four or five books, a couple of courses, a couple of tutorials, and then that's the extent of their plan. But they never really thought to themselves, hey, what are the exact steps I need to take that will lead me to actually start applying to jobs? Is it just gonna be reading all these books I have and watching the tutorials? And that's great. But usually it needs to go beyond that. And one of the things I've said in previous videos is that you wanna build as many projects as you possibly can. You wanna build a portfolio. I'd say a minimum of four projects. Maybe you wanna aim more for eight, 10, 12, something in that range. There's no shortage of ideas of projects on the internet, so you have no excuse there. But it's really good to sit down and write out, not just think in your head but to actually write out and talk about a plan and say here's you know the five projects I'm going to build here's the progression of the projects and here's the key so for those of you who are really nervous about doing this because you think you're going to make the wrong plan 
a terrible plan is 1000 times better than no plan because even a terrible plan you can improve over time and it can change. So just get a plan out there. What you can do is once you have a plan, say, hey, I'm gonna build these five projects, here's the programming languages I'm gonna learn, then you can go and get what's called feedback. You can get feedback from any maybe friends who are software developers. If you go to a meetup, maybe you can give it to them and they can suggest things. Maybe you can post on a forum, maybe you can go to my free Facebook group and ask for feedback there. But the thing is, if you just get a plan out, you can always tweak that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Mine certainly wasn't, I tweaked it a lot over time. So get yourself a plan because the plan will give you structure and will also let you know what steps you need to take next. The third thing that I've seen that really increases struggling is a lack of what I call progress points. So let's say you're on a long journey, on a long road trip, like a 30 hour road trip. One of the things that makes the road trip bearable is you can see out the windows and see certain landmarks. So you can know how far away you are from the destination. If somebody blindfolded you while you were in that road trip, you may get driven crazy by the fact that you don't know where exactly you are because you can't see all these landmarks. Well, the same thing happens when you're learning to code. If you haven't given yourself a roadmap that's gonna spell out sort of what you need to do to get to the point where you can start applying for jobs, then you may be halfway through working your butt off, but you don't know how much farther you have to go. And that drives people nuts. So what I found is that many people who get very far into this start to really struggle with their motivation because they don't know how much farther they have to go. And even worse, they don't have anything to look back on and to see how far they've come. And this is one of the biggest problems I have when I work with people is that they've made a ton of progress, they've done really well in the short period of time that I work with them, but they get hung up on something, they get stuck on this little concept that they don't know, and they say, wow, I'm an idiot, I can't figure this out, I'll never do it, and I have to remind them, like, look at how much progress you've made. You can actually see all the projects you built, all the things you've learned, so it gives you that motivation to keep going, but more than that, you can also see how much farther you have to go. So it's so important for your own psychology to create some sort of progress points, what I call landmarks, so you can see how far you've come and how far you have to go. And honestly, that just comes from creating that plan for you that I talked about in the last step. So make sure not to skip that, create the plan for yourself, even if it's imperfect. So really those are the main ways I found that people make this process a lot harder than it has to be. I hope that this video has helped. If it has, definitely go down and smash the like button. Also leave me a comment, let me know what you think. And other than that, if you haven't joined my free Facebook group already, definitely do that as well. I'll leave a link in the description below. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, and as always, peace out, everybody.